Okay. Good morning, class. Welcome to our first uh, class for food science and nutrition. The unit is meant to help us to understand nutrients and how what they do in our bodies and how, how we can get these nutrients from food and also be able to give advice to others, either maybe professionally or maybe at home or uh, within your circles, so that you have you lead a healthy life and you also help your friends and others to also live a healthy life. So we are going to uh, start looking at, uh, at the first topic. And the, uh, I mean, like, like uh, before we, we look at the first topic, maybe we can uh, look at the, the what the the course outline Okay, sorry about that. So if you look at your screen, you can see something that has the the the, 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 the ZTEC University logo, and that is the course outline for our course. It is written for science and nutrition, for certificate in food and beverage production, service and sales. And uh, your lecturer is me, Caroline Murigi. And uh, yeah, th those are the hours. Then he says it's a, it is a unit that brings uh, the learner to uh, to the no I mean to the knowledge of human nutrition as well as the chemical substances that are found in food both good and bad. By the end of this course, the student should be able to understand the importance of food science and nutrition and its effects to food security and its application to food industries. Um, upon completion of this course, you should be able to prevent foodborne or mal malnutritional diseases, then food, hum uh, food promote human health through prevention of disease and advise peers and the community on healthy eating. The topics are as follows. So like today, being our first time meeting on the blue button, we are going to discuss the introduction to uh, food science and nutrition. Then the next week, we shall look at acids, bases, and salts. Then organic chemistry the next week. Then nutrients the next week. Uh, then uh, uh, the next week, but one, food commodities, then enzymes, then food spoilage, and food additives. Some some of these topics we are going to have to cover them on the same day. So uh, depending on uh, the time available, like food and additives and food storage, you can actually tackle them on the same day. Yes. So those are generally the the whatever you need in, instructional materials. We have uh, books like plant food for human uh, plant foods for human nutrition, probi probiotics and antro antimicrobial proteins. Um, and then there's also another book called Introduction to F uh, Food Science and, and Nutrition. So our first topic is this one here, Introduction to Food Science and, 
and nutrition. If you look at the, def, uh, at the subtopics, you have definition of terms, importance of uh, nutrition, and uh, the balanced diet, then food composition tables, then nutrition disorders. Okay, so now uh, we are going to go straight into the, the topic and uh, maybe first of all go on and discuss the definition of terms. You will find that sometimes we are going to keep on repeating them, repeating them every other day and that is what we are going to look at today. And um, uh, definition of terms and here we are looking at terms like nutrition. What is nutrition? Nutrition is the understanding of uh, nutrients or what we eat. It is about eating a healthy and balanced diet. Food and drink provide the energy and nutrients you need to be healthy. So uh, when you talk of nutrition, you should always see it as a, a study of nutrients. Okay. The other one is, um, um, I should have uh, pangered them in the order. Others, we may not even be able to discuss them today. We have diet. Your diet is made up of what you drink and eat. And there are many types of diets that people like uh, do what? Adopt and use maybe because either you're losing weight or something. And uh, then we have digestion, the process that the body uses to break down food into nutrients. Then we have um, enzymes. Enzymes are very important in the body because they are, uh, they are present from the mouth to the stomach all the way to the intestines and they help in uh, chemical reactions in the body. They help the body to be able to metabolize, metabolize the food and actually break it down into uh, usable uh, sugars or uh, proteins or uh, do you call them uh, peptic acid and and, pep and uh, peptic acid and pepsin. Okay, so then we have fiber. Fiber is also very important. And um, then nutrients, yes. So the nutrients are chemical compounds found in food that are used by the body to function properly and maintain health. Examples include protein, fats, carbohydrates, vitamins, and minerals and also we have water very very important it's very important that we also have water right there okay then we have nutrition like we said it is a field of study that focuses on food and substances in foods that help animals to grow and stay healthy nutrition science also includes behaviors and social factors related to food choices. The foods we eat uh, provide energy and nutrients such as protein, fat, carbohydrates, vitamins, mineral, and water. Eating healthy foods in the, in the right amounts gives your body energy, perform daily activities, and helps you to maintain a, a healthy body weight and can lower your risk for certain diseases such as um, diabetes and heart disease. So we have uh, other uh, definitions there, like we have polyunsaturated fats, that is uh, either that is uh, fat in that is liquid at room temperature, and uh, we have uh, different kinds like fat omega six and omega three. Then we have protein. Protein actually is what really makes up us, the body, your body. Every living cell in the body is protein. Okay, and your body needs protein from food to, so that it can continue building and maintaining uh, uh, the body. So to maintain, uh, to build and maintain bones, muscles, and skin, you need uh, to eat proteinous foods. So that is uh, protein. You can go back and look at others up there, like amino acids. Amino acids are very important. They're actually found in proteins, and they are what we call the building blocks of protein. The body requires, uh, I mean, like uh, some from food, we call them essential amino acids. 
the body produces many amino acids and others come from food the body absorbs amino acids through the small intestines into the blood here uh, for amino acids we have those that the body uh, will uh, i mean will synthesize itself in a tengeneza in the body we call them non essential uh, uh, amino acids then the essential amino acids are those that we have to take food from, i mean we have to take, uh, get from food so that they can be used in the body then we have conditional amino acids and those ones you only require them, uh, them maybe when you are sick maybe when you have you are bleeding and you're losing a lot of blood that is when you need them but they are, they, they, i mean the conditional amino acids are also mostly in the uh, essential amino acids we have blood glucose that i'm about to call blood sugar is the main sugar found in the blood uh, and the main source of energy in your body sometimes blood sugar can either be too low or too high but the normal blood sugar should be between 6 and 7.5 6 and uh, 7.5 so if you if your sugar is reading either too low or, or too high then it means is, uh, you, you are having a problem with your sugar okay so if uh, your sugar reads uh, anything below uh, uh six you should be worried if it reads more than 7.5 you should also be worried because when it is too low you have uh type 1 diabetes and when it is too high you have type, uh, type 2 diabetes then we have calories 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 is a unit of energy in food, and carbohydrates, fats, proteins, and alcohol in the food and uh, and drinks we we take uh, can provide uh, those calories. The only food that does not uh, have calories is the vitamins. If you look at that, and the minerals. So we have carbohydrates, fats, proteins, uh, bringing those. Then minerals, water, and uh, vitamins do not bring any calories into the body okay then we have carbohydrates carbohydrates are uh, one of the main types of uh, the nutrients and of course it is what is converted into glucose or the blood sugar we talked about up there and uh, when it, it is in excess and your body can be able to synthesize it it can be stored as fat when when you take too much of it so the extra sugar it is actually stored in your liver and muscles for when it is needed. So that is how we get uh, we get to grow fat. If you eat too much uh, of food like proteins and carbohydrates and fats, of course the extra fat, uh, the extra sugars are going to have to be stored and they'll be stored under the vital organs of the body like the skin and uh, the liver, the kidneys and around the heart. So that is uh, how we get it. Uh, we, we 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 get to grow fat we like over overdo it then uh we have cholesterol uh cholesterol is a waxy fat substance fat like substance that is found in the cells of uh, bodies and your body needs some cholesterol to make hormones and vitamin d okay some we have some good cholesterol and we also have some bad cholesterol so high levels of cholesterol in the blood can also increase your uh, your risk of heart disease. So the good cholesterol, we call it the high density lipoprotein. High density lipoprotein. So I'll be looking at that now. High density lipoprotein. There. Yeah. So this is the good cholesterol. We we call it um, HDL or high density lipoproteins. And of course, it is um, it uh, it is actually uh, used in the in the body, and uh, the excess of it can be removed from the body through the liver. Okay. Then the other bad cholesterol is called low density lipoproteins or ldl 
and it is what, uh, one of the, 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 the two types of lipoproteins. And uh, it leads up to a buildup of cholesterol in your arteries, in a block the heart arteries and can cause what we call uh, the rhombosis. I'm a uh, what? Heart attack. Okay, so then there's something we call metabolism. What is metabolism? Metabolism is the process your body uses to get or make energy from the body you, you, you eat. Uh, I mean, from the food you eat. Uh, me metabolism is the process your body uses to get or make energy from the food you eat. Okay, uh, then we have monounsaturated fats. Those are the very healthy fats, monounsaturated fats. The very healthy fats that we find in avocados, canola nuts, canola oil, nuts, olive, and olive oil. Okay? If you eat food that have more monounsaturated fat instead of saturated fat, you, uh, you, you lower your cholesterol and uh, reduce the risk of heart disease. Okay? So those are generally some of the terms. And uh, of course, you'll find that there are more there. You might actually be looking, uh, finding them once in a while. So saturated fats are those fats that actually cause bad cholesterol. And you find them in milk. You find them in meat. Here it is. We have a saturated fat is a type of fat that is solid at room temperature and uh, is found in full fat dairy products or uh, yeah, uh, what we call whole whole milk and such, like butter, cheese, cream, regular ice cream and whole milk. Then you have coconut oil, lard, palm oil, and ready to eat meats. And uh, the skin and fat of chicken and turkey, among other foods. They tend to, because of the fact that the food, the, the, the fat is solid at room temperature, it tends to also clog the blood vessels. Okay. Sodium, sodium is a mineral that we find where in salt. Uh, our salt, the salt that we eat uh, on the, I mean, uh, the salt at the table, we call it sodium chloride. So, so uh, table salt is made up of sodium and chlorine. So it's very important in the diet. It helps in the function of nerves and muscles and also uh, helps to write the balance of fluids in your body. Okay. So we have total fat, we also have trans fats. Trans fats are those, uh, the, the type of fat that is created when liquid oils are changed into solid fats. Like you had, maybe you bought something like uh, uh, fresh fry uh, cooking oil, and then after some time it, is cha it, is, it changes into solid fat, like um, shortening and some margarines, okay? It can uh, be used to preserve food, like you, you some some what we call uh, things like tuna, fish, and uh, sardines. They are stored in, uh, under that uh, trans fat so that they don't go bad easily. Okay, the water intake, water intake uh, that is very important in your body. Uh, we talk of uh, uh, we all need to drink water, uh, and how much you, uh, you need depends on your size and activity level and the weather you in which you live uh it's good that you keep uh, a track of your water intake because it uh it means that your metabolism and homeostasis are going to be affected if your water intake is low or if you don't have water in your body but uh, good news is that also all the foods that we are we eat always have that water but you have to supplement the, uh, the amount of water in the food by taking water in its raw state, the way we know it from the dispenser or from the tap. Okay. Uh, so then we look at um, importance of uh, good nutrition. Why do we need... Why do we need uh, to eat good and healthy food? We have talked about some, uh, when you talked about nutrition, we said you will be able to live a healthy life when you eat foods that are rich. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, I mean, we, we eat a good uh, balanced diet. So it will risk, uh, it will reduce risk uh, factors for adult chronic diseases, 
like hypertension and type 2 diabetes and um you may also have uh, uh good, i mean healthy weight and uh, also maybe generally feel like you are you are you can be able to do a lot of physical activity without any uh, problems it is also very important in the metabolism of the body every nutrient that is uh, within the six you need it in your body to make sure that you are full, your your body is is uh, actually uh, being able to function in the right way so we can say good nutrition is an important part of leading a healthy lifestyle combined with physical activity your diet can help you reach and maintain a healthy weight reduce your risk of chronic diseases and promote your overall health so that is generally why we need to eat a uh, good uh, i mean a, a food that is a good balanced diet so now let us talk about the balanced diet what do you mean when you talk, we keep on saying the balanced diet Tabitha. Tabitha? What is a good balanced diet? You can write it right here. What is a, a balance, a good balance diet? If your background is not noisy, you can you can remove your headphones for a little time and talk. Yes. <laughs> A good balance diet. Sorry? I can't hear you. You are breaking. I can't hear you. You are breaking. Okay, uh, Tabitha, uh, a good balanced diet is uh, food where you make sure that you have all the six nutrients well distributed as, uh, as per the United States De uh, Department of Agriculture, either in the food pyramid or in the daily, the, the daily plates. So you will find that some nutrients are more, I mean, are needed in a larger amounts, while others are needed in very small amounts. For example, uh, I'll be showing you a, a plate here within the, uh, in our, um, in the, in the notes, it says that, a balanced diet is that one that is the one that fulfills all a personal a person's nutritional needs and you need a certain amount of calories and nutrients to stay healthy a balanced diet provides all the nutrients a person requires 
without going over the recommended daily calorie intake without going over so not overdoing it okay so if you look at that that is a, a food pyramid under the united states Dep uh, department of agriculture and at the base there you can see that is where we have the most space that means that this is what you should eat in in large amounts and then the doctor goes on and advises you to eat this when it is in 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 wholest form don't go and do refined uh, flours like hostess and uh, eat chapatis from white flour instead you do whole meal flours like atta mark one it will be more healthy for you because they tend to the, 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 the whole meals tend to stay longer in the stomach and you don't feel hungry so you will not overeat then we have vegetables are the next and then uh, within with the fruits so vegetables and fruits also in uh, quite a larger amount almost as uh, big as th that of uh, the grains then of course the fruits are not as many as the vegetables so the vegetables tend to be uh, need to be eaten in a in a more um, in a larger amount than the fruits then here we have two we have the milk and alternatives or milk and its products then we have meat fish eggs and alternatives here then in uh top there we have all those other things fat oil salt and sugar they take the smallest part of the of uh, the food pyramid so that means when you're eating uh your food you are plate uh tabitha should look like this yes your plate should look like that on your plate the most of the food you should have is the vegetables and a fruit on the side then uh such also should be uh, quite a, a, a lot then the protein should be a little amount a little amount the rest is uh, uh either a milk milk or a or a milk product and the oil should be very little like what oil you use in the in the cooking that that can strip there all the way is for oil and and uh, spreads like margarine on bread then on the side here you can see other foods like chips or the snacks they should be eaten less often and in very small amounts so they are not even in the daily plate as uh, pass, uh, as uh, as past nini the guidelines so you only eat you only eat them once in a while not a daily thing like a bar of chocolate a day is actually like uh coating the i mean disease okay so you should always make sure that you don't eat a lot of those I'm very, very, very sorry. I forgot to share. So let me just go back and uh, do it. Okay. So um, that's why I need, I, I need you to react because I, I will not know if, if, you're, if you're not seeing anything because you're too silent. Okay. So we were talking about the balanced diet and we said it is uh that uh, I, I mean a good balance that is that that from it's one that provides all the nutrients a person requires without going over the recommended daily calorie intake so do not overdo it and the united uh, states department of agriculture recommends that uh, you eat your food either in uh, like in the this uh, food pyramid where the grains and the fruits and vegetables are quite in a big amount actually the grains are more and of course we said that the doctor also goes on and advises that we eat whole meal cereals and grains instead of processed ones so that you you are you you are you are assured of a, a better health you will not overeat if you eat whole meal grains you eat a little and get full 
for longer periods of time. Uh, well, if you compare by it, uh, in, uh, you compare it to eating foods that are very refined, like ugali from grade one flour, I'm a hostess. You will get hungry very fast, and also when you eat, you eat very large amounts, and of course that is going to be detrimental to your health. Then vegetables are supposed to be quite a lot, and kwa vegetables here we have uh, uh, all manner of vegetables, whether ni greens or white or fruity vegetables like uh, uh, the courgette, the eggplants, the cucumbers, all those are, uh, vegetables. You can eat some of them raw, while others you need to cook uh, lightly. Then uh, under uh, the proteins, we have milk, fish, egg, and other alternatives. Here we have the pulses or um, legumes. Here we have beans, we have peas. We have lentils and grams down here. You can actually substitute them for meat, especially when the doctor advises you not to take up a lot of meat, which is because it is not very good for your health. Milk and alternatives here, we have cheese, we have butter, we have um, cream, ice cream, yogurt here. Then up there we have fats, sugar and salt, very small, in very small amounts. So uh, in the at the end of the day, your plate, uh, Tabitha, should look like this. When you're feeding, you should have a lot of uh, grains on the table. I mean, uh, on the plate. Then the vegetables and uh, uh, fruits. The other like that. Then actually, it's not even a that. It's bigger than a that. Then you have. Um, uh proteins and milk and milk products and oil occupying the rest oil is in very very small amounts milk in a uh, even uh, in a, a bigger amount then protein is uh, uh bigger than the the milk but that is generally how you should have them uh, on a daily day on a daily basis then on the side here if you look at the side here you see kuna things like chips, chocolate, cupcakes and biscuits, sweets, all of these and uh, sweet sauces. You are, you've been told to eat them less often and in very small amounts, not a, day, a, a, a daily uh, thing. So it is important that you make sure you feed in the right, I mean, uh, you, you feed your body the right kind of food. Okay, so now we uh, we have looked at uh, what we need to eat, uh, the, the, like the balanced diet. And within the balanced diet, we, we say that we have six nutrients, and these six nutrients are uh, carbohydrates, proteins, vitamins, minerals, fats, and water very 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 important uh, nutrients in the body you must provide your body with these nutrients on a daily daily basis if you want it to uh, function right if you want your nerves your brain your body generally to feel good and to function very right very right then all those six nutrients are very very important now um we are not going to look at the nutrients in uh, depth today because we have a, a whole topic on i mean on them so we shall be looking at them uh, maybe much later but can we ask ourselves this tabitha what if you don't get these nutrients what if you don't get enough food what happens to you What happens? You get what we call food bon, uh, food disorders. Am I? Nutritional disorders.
I hope you can see my screen. Disorders. Yes, nutritional disorders. Let me just write nutritional disorders. So if you don't have enough of these nutrients in your diet, like on a daily basis, you may get what we call nutrition or nutritional disorders. And these are going to really affect how your body functions. They may even affect your health in a very big way. For example, the lack of vitamins affects her, our immunity system. So that means you get uh, sick uh, very easily. If you eat any food that is uh, having some microorganisms like bacteria, you are definitely going to go to get sick. Atacama, it was very small because your body cannot be able to fight off those bacteria. You are also go not also going to have uh, problems with your uh, nervous system especially when you don't have b uh, vitamin b in your diet then we have uh, other uh, problems like vision you are unable to see very especially in the night and uh, such other issues and when you talk of uh, uh, a low immunity you even get to have wounds in your mouth like you eat something like a sugar cane and your gum bleeds Ama, when you brush your teeth, your gum bleeds if you don't get enough vitamin C. It is very, very important and can kill. Actually, it was known to have killed so many people in the in the it is it the, the 17th, the 18th century. No, the, the 19th century. In the 18th, uh, people used to get sick and die from scurvy. And the people thought it was a very weird disease because it never seemed like it had any kind of cure. But the, the, the trick was only to make sure that your food was rich in vitamin C. Until the doctors were able to, uh, to establish the cause of it, that is how it ended. Okay. Even today we are having rumors that uh, vitamin B uh, 17, there's something like B, uh, vitamin B 17 is actually uh, the one that causes uh, most cancers if you actually don't have uh, a good intake of those. And uh, uh, it is very sad that most of us don't like eating uh, the pulses like lentils, beans and such, but they tend to give us a lot of a lot of uh, goodness that will prevent, uh, pre uh, protect our bodies from such diseases as cancer okay so now i'm going to look at uh, nutritional disorders briefly and there they are the main nutritional disorders that like we know them we have obesity obesity is that uh condition that you have when your weight exceeds your height okay you are, you are, you are, you are, sorry, I've not shared, sorry. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> so, obesity is the first one, and um, this is, when you tend to have a, 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 I mean, a heavier weight than what your, uh, your height should be able to carry. For example, um, you are able, to, you should be um, at a body mass index of about 18 to 25. 18 to 25. So if you are anything uh, uh, above 25, then you have started growing obese and of course we have uh, just a uh, slight ob uh, obesity and we also have morbid obesity where you are even unable to function or uh, uh, be active at i mean uh, um, at all some people grow uh, so big that they are they cannot even be able to move from wherever they are and that is morbid 
obesity. So you shall be looking at, at those uh, as we as we go on. Then we have starvation. Starvation is generally not having any food, okay? And of course, this most of the time is not something that you wish upon yourself. It is generally maybe when there is drought and there is no food at all. So in uh, uh, starvation, we also have marasmus. Marasmus uh, generally is the is the condition that you get when you get starved when you don't have food. Then we have kwashiorkor. Kwashiorkor is um, a very rampant uh, condition that we have, especially when people are unable to afford protein dishes. And like I said, protein dishes do not have to be meat. We can also have whole meal cereals, like uh, your maize, if it is whole, if you do your unga from the portion meal, without removing anything, it has some bit of protein. So if you have that, you are better off than that person who was eating white unga and they did not have any protein on their table. So uh, we have koshoko is caused by lack of proteins in the body. And uh, generally, it gives uh, people a distended stomach. A distended stomach. In a car, like all the time, you are very full. You are even have a D, like um, your the stomach is a D, like you are always very full. But in, in most cases, you are feeling that the stomach looks very big, but you are always feeling hungry. Then we have we say marasmus is the uh, the lack of food generally. So again, because you you are you you are lacking food, you are lacking those proteins. The stomach is still going to be to be very big but you also are going to be very skinny, like your bones can show and your eyes become very hollow, okay? Yes, then we have this condition here called anorexia nervosa. Anorexia nervosa is uh, caused by um, when people fear food, especially young girls, when they do not want to grow fat, they tend to fear eating a lot i mean a lot of food and actually they it gets into their heads and all of a sudden they cannot even eat anything they just want to eat vegetables and uh, of course that is going to bring a lot of problems in their bodies they are going to lack all, the, all those other nutrients that are important in the body because they imagine uh, sugar fat proteins are going to make them fat so they will not eat they will not they only want to eat a fruit and a vegetable and that is going to impact on their health and what they get is anorexia nervosa they look like a person with marasmus okay but again uh, apart from uh, having marasmus they have a mental condition because they they don't want to feed you have to force feed them okay okay then we have um Bulimia nervosa. Bulimia nervosa is um, now when you're stressed and your body wants to eat a lot of uh, food. Yani you you eat. Uh, do we call it stress eating? You eat and eat and eat until you cannot eat anymore. Actually, when you have bulimia nervosa, because it is a mental condition, you never get full. You will eat as long as you are awake, you're eating something. And of course, that is going to cause morbid obesity. Okay. Uh, then we have vitamin deficiency. Sorry. We have vitamin deficiency there. And uh, vitamin deficiency, you will find that we have such problems as um, scurvy, and scurvy is caused by the lack of vitamin C in the body. We have uh, A and D, vitamins A and D, when you don't have them in your, I mean, uh, vitamin A will cause ni uh, night blindness. You don't see well in the night. Okay, you are unable to see in the night. Then uh, vitamin D causes um, weak bones. You we call it osteoporosis. 
you have weak bones that cannot actually be able to carry a lot of weight and they can actually cause uh, injury okay so we have uh, vitamin a d c b uh, vitamin b causes a lot of uh, problems like we have uh, problems with the nervous system uh, sometimes we have um, um uh problems with uh, with the uh, no we said with the, with the nervous system and sometimes you will find that uh some people will get some diseases depend uh like uh hyper hyper uh, hyperkalemia and of course th those are caused by uh lacking some of these vitamin b's we shall be looking at them when we are looking at nutrition we shall have tables that will show us the vitamin where it is found and maybe if you don't have it what actually happens then we have um uh minerals trace element deficiency and trace element deficiency we mean we are talking about the mineral elements the mineral salts so here we have calcium we have sodium we have potassium we have uh phosphorus all those and selenium and zinc all those are very very important in the body and they are needed in very small amounts so if you don't like have them of course you're going to have uh, such problems as goiter caused by the lack of sodium in the body you are going to have uh, problems like uh, weak bones again if you don't have phosphorus potassium and calcium so it is very important that your food is uh balanced how uh, are the food of your patient or client is well balanced so that is generally it uh under the under the to uh, subtopics we also have the food composition tables. Uh, I would actually ask you to go and uh, get the food composition table from the Ministry of Health. And um, I will also give an, ass an assignment, and I think the assignment is already there. So you look at it. Okay, so that is uh, what we call the food composition table. Uh, right here, this this one here shows you where to find what kind of food. Okay, uh, where do we find what kind of food? And that is where, I mean, well uh, shown right there. But going forward, we have the tables. Okay, let me see. Yes, there we are. So if you look at that table, you will see that it gives us a food name and generally what we can get from that food. It tells you like uh, breakfast cereals, uh, um, uh, cornflakes, what kind of food are they giving you? For example, they give you calcium, they'll give you a bit of iron, a bit of magnesium, uh, 
phosphorus, sodium, zinc, and selenium in uh, beads. Then it will also go back and now uh, show you this other table where it is now giving you uh, what the food is giving you in terms of energy, protein, and such, and fiber. So we have uh, maize, grain, white variety, whole or dry stewed without salt. What does it give you? Okay. So it gives you energy of uh, 469, um, 11, 111, you know, 111 calories, 72.1 grams of water and uh 2.6 grams of protein the whole maize if you uh you can notice that isn't it then uh, maize grain yellow variety whole dry and raw it has a, even, an, an even bigger amount of protein 8.3 grams then fats we have uh from the maize you have 1.5 from the white maize and from the yellow maize, 3.7, like that. So that is how the food composition table looks like. And as a nutritionist, I will expect you to look at this food composition table and have it in your fingertips. Um, Tabitha, you need to understand this, uh, this information very well so that you know, even when you're telling someone, I mean, you, you, you are giving advice to a, a patient, you know, when you, uh, you mention what kind of food, what you are talking about. Okay. Yes. So that is generally it. And of course, we have all these are grains, first of all, cereals and products. We have millet finger, green maize, maize. Yeah. And then we have uh, other products. But also cereals and products, these are giving us the calcium in that food. Then we have um, other cereals like pasta, macaroni, rice, they are here. Uh, the energy they give and then the, 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 the minerals they also give, they are there. So you can see the, the tables. Make sure you have this table with you at uh, in your fingertips. So you can download it and keep it because uh, it is uh, uh, very hard to actually, uh, it will be such a big document to actually get it on the book. And again, it, it keeps on being updated. So uh, it's good that you get the, the right one when you keep on checking it on, uh, on uh, online. Okay, so we also have uh, starchy, starchy roots, tubers, and bananas there, arrow roots, uh, arrow root flour, peeled arrow roots, and such going all the way. Then uh, we have others like uh, tubers and bananas we have kina beetroot there we have um cassava irish potatoes radishes i'm even sure the carrots uh, things like carrots will also yes even carrots will be right here so uh you look at them and how much food they give and how much uh, energy they give in the body for, ex for example If you look at this uh, at this uh, table here for energy levels, you will notice that uh, some foods will give us very high levels of energy. Like banana can give uh, a kilojoule of uh, 1550 and uh, uh, 366 kilocalories. Then just water 2.3 you uh, look at the amounts of water in each and every of this food and then you realize that you are going to you, you will be able to get food from those eh? yes uh then 
radishes they they, they have very little uh, kilocalories very very little okay so that is generally it and uh, uh, radishes are, are vegetable so if you uh, to, to some uh, vegetables are very rich in vitamins and they have no calories they have no calories uh, whatsoever so that is generally it okay so uh, we are we are going to have those as a karibu sana burak you you are quite late we are almost finishing our class but it's good we, we, are, we are seeing you online karibu sana okay so th those are generally the the the, fu the the food composition tables that we are, we are looking at you will find them every, every time you just go to the internet and uh type food composition tables you will see one from uh, either FAO, like uh, food and agriculture organization of the world and then uh from the ministry of health you will also find one so like now i've looked for the far uh, FAO Kenya, Kenya food composition uh, tables from FAO, and uh, that is what I was showing you right there. So you will need to look at it and uh, keep um, checking on the, the the nutritional content of some foods that we eat. So I'm giving you an, uh, uh, an assignment, and the assignment is uh, to look to study the food composition table and give us. Um, food i mean the, the, the food value of uh, some starches there i'll be uh, you shall see it uh, uh, on the dashboard i'm going to to set it on the dashboard so you take the, the food composition table for 100 grams of maybe rice 100 grams of uh cassava and such okay and hand, maybe even uh, of protein see what kind of foods uh, these are going to give uh to you Okay. Yes. So, unless maybe you have any questions, and I said, like I said, we can uh, ask questions by typing on the public chat or uh, writing your problems here on this uh, board here. Let me give you a new one. Yes. Yes, you can you can use the board if you need a, uh, to ask a question, or you can ask, you can uh, disconnect your headphones and talk to me. Any questions? Yes, Burak. We will I get any like will I get the the sessions? Is it recorded? Yes, it is recorded. You can go back to uh, your the, the course and look for the big blue button. Click on the big blue button and you will find a recorded a recorded class with the notes. The notes are there on the on the topics. Uh, topics you will find notes attached. Eh? Okay, thank you. Yeah. Any question? No. I'm no question? Uh, Sabina, no any question. questions? Sabina? Sabina? <laughs> okay, I see it is giving you a lot of trouble. Um, just uh, drag it, drag uh, as you hold, and then you'll be able to get a, a, I mean, a better view of whatever you have written. Okay, so I, I, uh, I think this brings us to the end of our lesson today, our our recorded session today.
but that does not mean we are we, we finish class at all okay yeah yes 